vanilla OS Ubuntu done right for 2025? Is Ubuntu feeling familiar, comfortable, and a little stuck? In 2025, many users still love Ubuntu's ecosystem, but a growing number want the simplicity of vanilla GNOME, atomic reliability, and a modern package story that doesn't tangle the system. Enter vanilla OS, an opinionated, immutable desktop that tries to reimagine what an Ubuntu-style experience could be. Fast, recoverable, and friendly for everyday use. At its heart, Vanilla OS flips a few long-standing assumptions about Linux desktops. Rather than treating the root file system as something you constantly edit and patch, Vanilla uses an AB root model and a transaction system called AB root to apply updates atomically between two root partitions. That means updates are written to the inactive root, and the bootloader switches to it only when the update completes successfully. If anything goes wrong, you can boot the previous root. It's a very different safety model from the traditional live package-by-package package upgrades. Closely tied to that immutability idea is how Vanilla handles apps. The distro ships a tool set centered on APX, a package manager that intentionally acts as a wrapper and gateway to multiple sources of Debian packages, flat packs, and even other distro repositories, while keeping user applications separated from the immutable core. APX installs and runs packages inside managed environments, so your base system stays clean and recoverable, but you still get access to the software you need. In practice, that means you can have the reliability of a read-only core while running the widest possible set of apps. Earlier versions of Vanilla were rooted in the Ubuntu ecosystem, but the project moved to a hybrid Debian base with the Vanilla OS 2 ORCID rewrite. The new architecture pulls from Debian SID snapshots and introduces VIB modules and OCI image handling to make the hybrid base flexible and up-to-date. The move gives the project tighter control over upstream packages, and avoid some of the packaging constraints tied to Ubuntu's release cadence. So what does this all feel like day to day? Immutability and atomic updates change both risk and workflow. Updates become safe and reversible. The system can apply updates in a transactional manner and, if needed, roll back to the last working route instantly. That removes a lot of dependency hell, anxiety, and makes breakages far less catastrophic for everyday users. And it's one of the main selling points for people coming from stable, appliance-style systems. But it also nudges you toward containerized app workflows. Flatpak, APX subsystems, OCI images, rather than constantly mutating the base system. Hardware compatibility and performance are valid concerns. Vanilla OS 2 was built around a more modern kernel and GNOME stack. The project ships with updated kernels and GNOME 46 in recent releases and features like Prime profiles for multi-GPU setups and improved GPU handling are part of that picture. In testing and reports from reviewers, the desktop feels responsive and polished. The immutability layer adds some extra complexity under the hood, but not the kind of overhead that would make daily tasks feel sluggish. Still, for ultra-demanding workloads and some niche gaming setups, you may need to test drivers and GPU pass-through scenarios before switching entirely. What are the trade-offs? Vanilla's design buys a lot of safety and a cleaner core experience, but that safety comes with some shifts in how you manage software and system tweaks. Power users who love tweaking low-level packages or developers who depend on rolling app changes on the base system may feel constrained until they adapt to using APX containers or running a developer image. On the flip side, users who want a stable, quote, appliance like desktop with fast recovery, simple app management, and a near stock GNOME experience will find a lot to like. So who should try it? If you're frustrated with occasional upgrade breakage, you like the idea of a recoverable, immutable base, and you're comfortable using flat packs or containerized apps, Vanilla OS is absolutely worth testing as a daily driver. If you're a distro hopper who wants to experiment with modern update models and app isolation without losing a full desktop, Vanilla is an intriguing middle ground. If you're a heavy developer who needs a mutable base for constant system level changes, you might want to dual boot or run Vanilla in a VM while you adapt workflows around APX and containers. In short, Vanilla OS doesn't simply polish Ubuntu. It rethinks the safety and update model a desktop should deliver in 2025. 
It's not perfect, and it asks you to adopt a slightly different mental model, but for many users, that trade-off will be worth it. Try it in a VM, see how AB Root and APX fit your workflow, and judge the swap by how quickly you can recover from an update gone wrong, because that's the problem Vanilla most convincingly solves.